So just as risk factors are important, so too are protective factors are important. So things like safe, stable, nurturing relationships and environments. We know that these can really help children overcome early adversity and can really help even prevent early adversity in the first place. I'll start with protective factors um, when we think about ACEs because that's the good stuff. That's the stuff we want all families and children to have in order to protect against early adversity. But we have to also look at the risk factors, not only how they impact early childhood and adversity, but again, how they impact different groups differently. Um, some groups have fewer risk factors and other groups have far more challenges in terms of what causes early adversity for children and families. It's important to note that the presence of risk factors does not mean that a child will inevitably experience adversity. Likewise, protective factors do not guarantee that a child will be safe from adversity. Risk and protective factors can also offset or balance each other out. A fulcrum scale can help demonstrate this point. When positive protective experiences outweigh negative experiences, a child's scale can tip towards positive outcomes. Likewise, negative experiences can destabilize positive development and tilt the scale toward negative outcomes. Some children start out with the scale tipped toward negative outcomes, putting them at greater risk for ACEs than other children. For example, children living in families with a low socioeconomic status have rates of child abuse and neglect that are five times higher than rates among children living in families with a higher socioeconomic status. So it's kind of like if you have this balance, you know, you have risk factors on one side, you have protective factors on one side, and really it is as simple as if you have more protective factors than risk factors, you're probably gonna do better, both health-wise, productivity-wise, and just life-wise. If, you if you're burdened by a lot of risk factors and you don't have these protective factors in place to really combat that risk, then you're at these increased you know, odds for being unhealthy, not as productive, and really not being able to achieve your maximum health and life potential. When considering inequities like these, it's important to keep in mind that some individuals and families experience higher levels of stress and disadvantage due to factors that are often out of their control, including discrimination and barriers related to socioeconomic status. To prevent and address disparities that can increase the risk for ACEs, we use research and data to identify opportunities to intervene across the social ecological model. Research and data can also inform efforts to reduce or eliminate factors that put kids at risk and enhance factors that protect them. One important thing to note is that ACEs affect all families. They affect, you know, kids of all color, of all race, of all socioeconomic disposition. They happen in all communities, in urban communities, rural communities, suburban communities. So no one is kind of immune, if you will, to um, experiencing early adversity. But there are those that are at greater risk and really experience a disproportionate burden of early adversity. We could maybe think there's something about those parents that you know put their kids at disproportionate risk but that is not what we what we find what we find is that you know parenting happens within a context there are certain contexts that support children and families and others that don't this is neighborhood level factors and context so distance to grocery stores for healthy foods for families transportation how are these parents getting to work how are they able to access parenting services right is there transportation is there um, food available is their high quality, affordable childcare in the community. All of these things also determine whether a group is at increased risk or not. So from that approach, we have to think that there's a really societal level factors, policies, norms, approaches that can really help give all of our kids an equal opportunity, if you will, of being healthy and being productive and really you know, achieving maximum health and life opportunity. So as we've grown our understanding about some children being at greater risk than others um, for experiencing early adversity, we've really shifted the question from, is this something about the parents or is this something about the conditions in which parents are raising their children? Through that, we've really come to appreciate the, the narrative around that in this country, this, the story that if you're not making it in this country, you're not trying hard enough and yet not everyone has access to these same conditions for health. 
despite that, there's there's a, a narrative that says that if you're born into poverty, if you work hard enough, you're able to move yourself out of poverty, even though the research is solid that if you're born into poverty, there's a very small chance you'll even make it into middle class in, over the course of a lifetime. And so creating a new narrative around, it's something about the conditions in which parents are raising their children, and that as a society, we really all have responsibility for assuring that all parents have safe, stable, nurturing environments in order to raise their children to be their healthiest and to thrive that's how we'll have the healthiest society. So we all have a role to play in assuring safe, stable, nurturing relationships and environments for all children. So we all have multiple roles in our communities and all of those roles are critically important to trying to bring all children up. The data are really clear that my children will actually do better if all of the children around us are doing better. So what do we mean by that? We mean like things like being, you know, active in your community organizations, you know, really trying to have a voice for children in your PT for example, or um, in other community hats that you might wear. Um, also, you know, mentorship. Really, there are strong data to show that safe, stable, nurturing relationships between children and other adults that are not their parents can sometimes buffer for maybe a lack of those kinds of safe, stable, nurturing relationships in the home. Take a moment now to test your knowledge and review concepts from this lesson.